Um, so without further ado, since we're running a little bit behind, I'd love to bring up Dr. Kevin Wright, who is a professor with the School of Criminology and Criminal Justice. Um, he teaches the Inside Out Prison Exchange Program, which is a class that meets once per week inside Arizona State Prison Complex in Florence. And the class is taught to a combination of students from ASU and then um, people who are incarcerated. So um, without further ado, here he is. Um, first of all, thanks to, to Peace for uh, inviting me here today. I feel very fortunate to be sharing this room with uh, folks who are, are just putting in countless hours to do really, really great work. And so um, I'm very appreciative to be here. And so thank you. Uh, so my name is uh, Kevin Wright. I am an associate professor in the School of Criminology and Criminal Justice here at ASU. Uh, that is on the downtown Phoenix campus. It is within the College of Public Service and Community Solutions. Um, and so I'm, I'm, I'm very excited to, to be here today to talk about this program. It's something I'm very passionate about, something that we've got a lot of help along the way in, in kicking off. And just as a way of sort of introducing it, um, I, I love what I do. Um, I'm, I'm a criminologist. I get to understand people. I get to uh, listen to people's stories. And um, they're always interesting. They're always fascinating. Everybody's different. Uh, when that comes into the classroom, sometimes we lose that, and sometimes we change those stories into statistics or really big, thick textbooks or uh, PowerPoint presentations, which unfortunately I'm giving a PowerPoint presentation, so this doesn't work all that well. But, um, you know, we lose all that. We lose all that humanity and strip it away, and it, it frustrates me. Um, I don't want to do giant lecture halls anymore. I don't want to do big textbooks. I don't want to not know my student's first name. And this Inside Out Prison Exchange program for our ASU students absolutely changes that. And for the guys on the inside, potentially changes their life. And so uh, I'm very excited to, to share it with you here today. Uh, so in terms of outline, what I want to do today, I want to talk about our first class. And so the first class in the, in the state of Arizona was taught in the spring of 2016. Uh, and so I'll give you a little bit more information about that class, how it went, and some of the outcomes from that. I also want to talk about how we envision Inside Out. And I believe it's a little bit different than the national model of Inside Out. And so to me, Inside Out is more than just a class. It's more than just a course. Uh, it's programming. It's a partnership with the Arizona Department of Corrections. Um, as you'll see, we, we're, we're doing a lot of different cl uh, collaborations with ADC that I think make this class unique and make it uh, what it is. And so I'm going to spend some time talking about that partnership. And then I'll conclude uh, very briefly here today with um, why I think that Inside Out and the model that it follows is potentially a solution uh, moving forward and how it might be a little bit different than traditional programming or classes. So before I get into uh, our Inside Out program in Arizona, it's always incredibly important to me to acknowledge that Inside Out is a national program. It is not unique to ASU. It is not unique to Arizona. It was developed in, in 1997 by Lori Pompa of Temple University. And so she deserves all the credit for launching this program and for getting to where it is today. And so as you look at this map, you see it's a very um, East Coast um, centered uh, program. You see a lot of dots over there in the Northeast and not a whole lot in the West. Right? Right, so we've got our dot on there in the state of Arizona down in Phoenix. Um, we're hopeful that within five years or so, we might become a training institute for Inside Out of the Southwest, uh, that we can kind of put it on the map for Arizona and the Southwest. But again, a national program, not unique to Arizona. Um, their website is wonderful, and so check that out uh, as well. This is our first class. And just to give you a, a unique um, perspective into this, which many of you that, that teach in prison in this room know, uh, for the longest time, I had the men in orange, I had their face blurred out in this photo uh, because we did not have their permission to release that photo. And so uh, we eventually got 11 different public information releases signed by all 12 inside students in this picture, all 11 in this picture, uh, to be able to show this photo. And so this is our first class. Everyone in a black shirt is an ASU student, um, or what we call outside students. Everybody in orange is an inside student. Uh, this is the visitation room of the East Unit down in Florence. It is a medium security unit. That's where our class takes place. Uh, so the colorful wall back there, this is where visits take place. This is where children come to, to visit their parents and uh, families talk. All right, so that's that first class. 
That first class took a lot of planning. Um, we worked with Arizona Department of Corrections, in particular, Warden Greg Pfizer of um, the Florence Complex was incredibly instrumental in launching this off the ground. And so Greg and I had uh, countless meetings in the year before Inside Out was launched. I went to training in Philadelphia at Greaterford Prison to learn the Inside Out method. Uh, and we took v uh, great care in launching this first class. Uh, there is a selection process for both outside and inside students. This is what our outside web page looks like. I see lots of students here. If you're an undergraduate, we're about ready to kick off the next class. And so please do uh, uh, apply for, for the fall semester. But this is what it looks like. Um, we got about 80 applications from ASU students last time. We go through those applications. We bring 20 in for interviews. And from that 20, we select 10 individuals to take part in this class. The same thing happens for the inside students. And so flyers go up around the yard. They submit kites or letters of interest to be a part of this program. DOC narrows that down to about 20 individuals. And then I go on the inside and we interview people for this class and select the final 12. Uh, so again, a very involved process in order to get the best students for this particular class. That first class, we had 22 students. Again, it was in the medium security yard down in Florence, uh, Arizona. Um, the deputy warden was Anne Marie Smith Whitson, who is now the deputy warden of the North Unit down in Florence. Um, incredible friend to, to ASU and the program. And again, one of the very instrumental ADC um, staff administrators to allow us to be successful at this program. Um, the best way that I can describe this class, and so I'm happy to answer any questions about it, um, it's a general criminal justice class, and so we get in there and we talk about uh, why do people engage in crime, what are prisons for, um, we talk about parenting and what makes for a, effective parenting, we talk about victimization, so we talk about a, re a lot of really, really tough topics. Um, but how I always like to explain this class is that uh, when we first started, it was two and a half hours long. So we drive down there once a week. We take ASU students down in a van, uh, drive down to Florence. We spent two and a half hours there, and then we drive back. We get back late at night. Um, two and a half hours wasn't enough for our students. They didn't want to leave. And so we, we began to extend that, and then it became three hours. And then it was like three hours and change where we're milling around afterwards, and, and staff is ready to kick us out because they want to go home. Um, I've never had an ASU class where people ask for more time much less three hours on top of essentially two and a half hours of, of transport. And so these students are spending five, six hours every Monday down in Florence uh, on the inside. There's a graduation ceremony for Inside Out. Uh, the first part of that ceremony, we invite in um, folks from ADC, folks from ASU. Uh, I had my um, uh, director of the uh, School of Criminology and Criminal Justice speak. I spoke. We had our students speak. We handed out certificates. Um, we had uh, guys on the inside playing in the band. Um, we had um, cupcakes that were made by an outside student that we brought on the inside. It was a wonderful time. Uh, and then we kick out all the extra guests and we do our own little intimate uh, goodbye and graduation ceremony. That ceremony alone lasted six hours, right? And so that was about an eight, nine hour day. This is kind of the power of this class and how important it is to those that are in it. Right now we are doing the second class, um, also at the East Unit uh, under the, um, uh, our new liaison is Deputy Warden uh, Schumann down there. Uh, and so we kicked off the second class up at the top. You will see the books that we're all reading together for this class. And so they're very popular books that um, you can get on Amazon. Again, keeping up with me, not wanting to do huge textbooks or anything like that. We want our students reading what everybody's reading. We want them in touch with the system. Uh, at the bottom there, we do use first names in Inside Out. Uh, and what we did this time around is we had our inside students create a name tag for an outside student, and an outside student created a name tag for that same inside student. And so these are this is some of the wonderful talent, um, both at ASU and, and behind the walls. Um, you can't see it that well, but I also made one. And uh, I made this one in the back right here. So you can't read it all that well, but uh, I made that name tag for Rico. And Rico is a Green Bay Packers fan. Uh, and I have no artistic ability whatsoever. None, absolutely nothing. And so my name tag was a yellow background with his name written in green, and that was it. And I took it up to him that day, and I've never seen someone so disappointed in their life in, in my efforts. <laughs> I felt terrible, I, I felt like I let him down, but uh, his name tag for me, uh, I'm a big Boston Red Sox fan, he made a New York Yankees name tag for me, <laughs> or their hated rival. Uh, and then on the back of that, he put a U of A logo, so I would always have the U of A logo close to my 
my heart. Uh, so uh, thank you, Rico. But um, again, this is, this is kind of how we start this class, where we say, you don't even know this individual yet, but you're going to make a very personal name tag for them that they're going to wear for the rest of the semester. Uh, so second class is, is off and running. Um, we're having a, a, a wonderful time doing that. Third class is in preparation. Uh, we're gonna move to the north unit, and so we'll be in two units down in Florence, and so we're expanding already. Um, so we've been asked to do more down there. That is minimum custody. Uh, I'm gonna co-teach that class with Ashley Randall, who's here today, and so we're also expanding it at ASU to get different disciplines involved with this. Uh, and I also wanted to mention that we are uh, a finalist for funding from ASU's Women in Philanthropy uh, Foundation to continue inside out. Um, just to give you an idea of how much that organization appreciates this, uh, there was over 70 projects that applied and it's now down to eight for these eight finalists and Inside Out is one of those. The other seven, it's like early cancer detection, it's self-driving cars, it's all these big huge you know, ideas and initiatives at ASU and Inside Out is right there at the table and so we're very proud of that. Uh, I wanted to move on to talk about how we, we view this potentially a little bit differently. Again, I said that this was programming. This is a partnership with the Arizona Department of Corrections. And I think the best way to kick that off is to uh, show you a photograph. And so uh, in the middle of this photograph in the graduation gown, um, cap and gown, is Caitlin Mateckel, who is one of our ASU undergrads who also interned with the Arizona Department of Corrections. This is her graduation uh, here on Tempe campus um, in uh, last spring. Uh, in the middle there is uh, Deputy Warden Anne Marie Smith Whitson, who oversaw Caitlin's uh, internship in the ADC. Off to the side there is CO3 Brennan and CO3 Scott, who also worked with Caitlin in ADC. <coughs> they made the drive up on an early morning to attend her graduation to support her with her family. Right? And so that's kind of how we envision this partnership, this collaboration, that it's almost an ASU ADC family, that there's mutual support there. And you're going to see more of that as I, I move through these slides, and I'll, I'll try and do so quickly. I know we're short on time. Uh, so if we think of Inside Out just by itself, and we think of it as just a class, I don't think it's as powerful or, or as impactful as it could be. Right? It's, it's wonderful. We believe it's life-changing. We think it helps for ASU. We think it helps for guys on the inside. But we think it could be uh, part of something larger. So onto that, we add um, research. And at ASU, we're, we're very proud to say that we engage in use-inspired research. And so it has to have a meaning. It has to lead to a solution, especially in our college of um, public service and community solutions. We don't want to just do stuff just to publish it so nobody else is going to read it. And so we're engaged in a number of projects right now that I'd be happy to talk to um, anybody about in depth, um, supported by National Science Foundation, supported by National Institute of Justice, and projects that we wouldn't be able to do without the support of the Arizona Department of Corrections. And so um, I'll highlight just a couple of them that are up here. And so we have a master's student right now that is focused on barriers, uh, barriers to programming in prison. Uh, and what she's going to be doing is going in the inside and interviewing guys um, that are Inside Out alumni and talking to them about um, reasons that people may not participate in programming. And so we heard earlier that sometimes you don't participate because you're worried about your safety. Right? If you're worried about violence on the yard, the last thing that you have in mind is, is getting an education or improving yourself. And so that student is going to go in and ask questions. She's going to ask questions about masculinity. Sometimes um, guys don't want to program because they view it as a sign of weakness. Right, that they don't want to be seen as weak, that they're accepting help. We often don't think about that side of things. And so we want to find out some of those answers. Um, we're also looking at the impact of Inside Out. And so this time around, we had both ASU students and Inside students um, fill out a survey at the beginning of the semester. And we're going to follow up with a survey at the end of the semester. That survey looks at attitudes of, about um, their self, about self-efficacy, um, how they feel about their future. And we're hopeful that imp Inside Out will impact that and change those attitudes. And so we're engaged in research. So we Add all that on there uh, in addition to Inside Out. Uh, one of the other things I love about Inside Out is there's not necessarily a final grade or a final paper. We have final class projects. Uh, and again, this takes it beyond just a, um, a class or a course into something that we, we hope can affect change. Uh, that first Inside Out class actually designed three projects. Uh, I'll very briefly talk about two of them. And so the first one was to revive and improve this ICVC class. And so ICVC was a very popular uh, programming class among guys on the inside. It essentially 
usually brings victims and victims advocates into the uh, facility to talk about the impact that crime had on them. It's a very impactful, very influential course, and it was discontinued in ADC. And so our class did some research. We wanted to figure out why that is, why was it discontinued, and we essentially found out it was discontinued because they couldn't get victims to come in anymore, that they couldn't schedule it every week that a new victim would come in to talk to the class. And so we worked to change that. We worked to get more victims coming in. Um, we had one of our graduate students teach this class. She's now teaching the second one. Guys cry every week. It's incredibly impactful. It, it allows them to, to see crime from a different perspective. And that's back in large part because Inside Out um, brought it back. Uh, last thing I'll talk about is this reentry packet and website. Uh, so we also had a, a, a group in the class that organized all the existing resources available to people once they're released from prison. They put that into a packet that is now part of East Unit Programming for um, reentry, and they also created this website that you see here uh, to organize that information as well. Uh, so we add that on there. So research um, these different projects that come out of Inside Out. I spoke about internships already, and so we've had a couple down on the on the Florence complex out of the. School of Criminology and Criminal Justice. Um, we just met with um, staff at uh, the Phoenix Complex the other day to talk about how we could potentially get counseling psychology students, have their placement within uh, the facility there and work with mental health uh, or mentally ill inmates. And so, uh, again, we have these opportunities here to offer internships as well. So we surround that um, into Inside Out. After that first class, we decided we weren't done uh, and that we wanted to do more and we wanted to continue the work of that first class. And so we created a think tank. And there's uh, inside out think tanks nationwide. I think they have about eight of them across the nation and we are number eight. Uh, we call ourselves the Arizona Transformation Project. This is a brand new logo that was just finished by Johnny on the, on the inside a few days ago. And so not many people have seen this yet. I'm very excited about it. Uh, but essentially what the ATP is, is a think tank of ASU faculty and graduate students and then guys on the inside and so we meet with them a couple of times a month down in Florence we talk about ways to improve the inside out class but also about ways to improve uh, the prison system as a whole to give you an idea of the, of the power of this group and, and, and what we're, we're capable of doing, um, I'm also part of uh, the governor's recidivism reduction team, which we heard a little bit about earlier. Uh, and they essentially approached ASU and said, um, we're very interested in reducing recidivism. And they had a very honest moment and essentially said, before we can solve that problem, we need to understand the causes of that problem and why people recidivate. Can you help us out? And so we said, absolutely. Uh, but we started thinking and we said, sure, we can do the typical thing where ASU faculty and graduate students go on the inside, interview men and women, and try and get answers. Or we can use this group and capitalize on this group and actually have guys on the inside develop and ask the questions. And so what the ATP did was develop a survey, a survey for the governor's office, and they're also going to interview guys in the yard down in the East Unit. And so we actually have people on the inside interviewing other people on the inside to inform the governor's recidivism reduction team on what works and what doesn't work to reduce recidivism, something that we're very, very excited about. And so here is that survey. This is the beginning of it. And again, these questions were developed by guys on the inside, so it's not nerdy researchers like myself coming up with it. It's not nerdy researchers like myself doing the, the question asking, but actually the people that have gone through the system that are asking these questions, something we're, again, very proud about put that on there as well and you start to see this, this collaboration take form. Another thing we're working on right now is creating a, a, a prison art show to take place in either Phoenix or Tempe. Uh, this comes out of a class I'm teaching that's a project-based learning class with freshmen at ASU. And we're partnering with the Florence Complex to take art from the inside and bring it to the outside. And so we have in mind a silent auction to raise money for a charity, but we also want to raise awareness of the talent that, that exists behind the walls. And so this is um, done by a guy down in the East Unit. Um, we, we are looking for venues in Phoenix and Tempe. And so if you have an art gallery or a space and you want to host this, please get in contact with me. But again, it's something we're very excited about to show the humanity, to show the importance of, of programming that exists within the prison. So we throw that on there as well. Um, we've exchanged awards with the Arizona Department of Corrections, and I, I think this is, again, important and symbolic about the relationship that we've built with them. So on the left, again, is um, our intern AS, uh, ASU grad student, Caitlin Matekel, that was named uh, the Florence Complex Volunteer of the Year. On the right is Warden Greg Pfizer, who was named ASU uh, Most Outstanding Alumni for the School of Criminology and Criminal Justice. Again, this is the type of partnership that we've worked hard to develop that we think is mutually beneficial. And so it's not simply us coming in to teach or 
being allowed to do work on the, on the inside. We're doing stuff that we hope helps the department as well. So we throw that on there. We throw on guest lectures on there. And so we've had folks come from ADC to speak to our ASU students, uh, to tell them what it's like on the inside, to tell them what it's like to work inside of a prison. And again, Warden Greg Pfizer up there at ASU um, on the downtown campus talking to our students. Uh, throw that on there, throw the opportunity to tour facilities. So the Inside Out class is touring Central Unit this Monday. They'll have an opportunity to see um, the execution uh, chamber witness room, which always has a profound uh, impact on our students. And to also see the educational programming, those pictures you saw earlier, they have an opportunity to see where that takes place as well. <laughs> So again, by itself, it might not be that powerful or that impactful. It might just be another class. When we put it with all this stuff, we think that we can start to have this partnership that's really beneficial for everybody. This has also allowed us, and this is a temporary logo, so that will change, um, but this has allowed us to create what we're calling the Office of Correctional Solutions at ASU. And it organizes all the existing work that we're doing with the Arizona Department of Corrections, and it also enhances our capacity to do more. And so as you look up here, you see different affiliates from different departments and disciplines across ASU. Um, we want to do more on the inside that, that can help both the men and women that are working and living inside of prison. Um, so we're working with folks in counseling psychology and social work right now to develop a parenting program to um, pilot down in, in the north unit in prison uh, down in Florence uh, to get relationship counseling, parenting counseling to guys on the inside there. Uh, so again, we're trying to, to capitalize on this partnership that we built. A um, couple final slides here and, and then I'll be done. Uh, I mentioned I wanted to talk about Inside Out and that method is a, is a solution, right? Again, we're very big on solutions at ASU. We want to know what the problems are and we want to be able to attack those. Um, you've heard this all day today and so it's nothing new, but when I think about the men and women that are being released from prison, um, they're different than cohorts from before they have more risks and more needs than ever before. They have more educational deficits, uh, deficits than ever before. And so it's a much, much higher risk, much more higher need group than we've ever experienced before in uh, America. And we have never experienced it to this magnitude before when we talk about mass incarceration and now mass decarceration. And so it's a different group. And beyond that, they're serving more time than they ever have before, right? Many, many years behind bars than they ever have before. And so we've heard different examples today. Um, I've talked to guys on the inside that have essentially have had um, panic attacks in the cereal aisle because they had to pick out a cereal and they're not used to making choices like that. And so the time away is longer than ever before. And so when I think about programming and classes that will actually make a difference, in my mind they have to address each of these things. And we do a pretty good job of that first one of addressing these deficits and all the wonderful programming we've heard about today in educational classes, but maybe not as good a job in that second one. And we believe that Inside Out might be able to speak to that a little bit more because again, we bring in ASU students from the outside and they're interacting with guys on the inside. We've had guys say that they've now got the confidence that they can make it when they're released. And so I can talk about the impact until I'm blue in the face, but I've got one final voice that I want to share with you today. Um, I hate reading quotes right off the slide, but I'm going to do that. This is from Verone. He's an ATP member right now and an Inside Out uh, Inside Student alumni from that first class. Verone says, I have to say that the non-judgmental acceptance and invaluable insight I received from the outside students was crucial to my growth as a man and as somebody who will transition out of prison one day. The encouragement I received from hearing inside student testimonies and seeing their growth was inspiring to me. The wisdom and instruction we all received from our instructors, the direction they steered our class, and the deep conversations that developed because of the direction they steered us really caused me to dig deep and examine every aspect of my life. All of these things, combined with my own determination that I found to not give up, be responsible, stay on top of all my schoolwork, and really pour my heart and soul into every part of this class, has showed me that I can do anything I put my mind to. I can get an A. I don't have to fail in school just because I did as a youth. I can make a real difference in this world. Thank you. Uh, Verone was incarcerated in 2002, so he's essentially been incarcerated for almost 15 years now. In that time, he essentially had not spoken to any civilian whatsoever in those 15 years. Just officers on the inside and other guys on the inside. He's going to be released within five years. Uh, this to me is the inside out is the power of a solution to these issues. So thank you.